Hola my beautiful people, I'm back and this time with a video that has to do with HIV staging. Um, a lot of us have troubles doing this HIV staging thing because it can be quite confusing because of the um, interchangeable um, um, words and symptoms, but I found a technique that is um, that works for me and I felt that I should share it and if it works for you that would be great. If it doesn't then um, I guess we should still keep looking for you know um, easier methods to remember this but this is especially good for people who uh, like to visualize because this um, uh, summary is basically a picture summary. Um, so getting right into it we have four stages of um, of 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 HIV infection, um, in children and at uh, right now I'm just gonna refer to the the stages that we find in children and everything that I'm going to describe in this video will be pertaining to the infants and children. So stage one is also known as the asymptomatic stage. Stage two is also known as um, the mild stage. Stage three is known as the advanced stage, and stage four is known as the severe stage. So the reason, or the way I can always remember which comes first, because I, I did used to get confused about which is first, whether it's advanced or severe, but um, I remember that most of the time when we are doing um, staging of diseases, severe is always lost. So um, that is how I remember that as well, it is also lost here um, in this WHO classification. Um, so um, asymptomatic stage is, is as it says in, it, in the name itself. The patients are usually asymptomatic or if they do show any symptoms at all, it would be gen um, generalized lymphadenopathy. So if um, a patient has generalized lymphadenopathy and um, or they're not showing any symptoms at all, uh, lymphadenopathy, then um, if they're not showing any symptoms at all, then you classify them as stage one. Um, then stage two um, is the mild stage, and this stage in infants and children is characterized by a number of symptoms, and I'm going to um, um, basically portray that in a picture. So um, I'll quickly draw this picture. And um, so just a quick picture that you should probably draw with me because it helps. It really, really does help me. So it's just a little boy there standing and, you know, kind of just minding his own business as we examine him or look at him. I don't know, something going on there with his feet, probably smelly feet. And, oh, we have a snail here. It's probably in the park or somewhere near sand. Um, then we also have, like, he has his many bumps on him. Like, there's plenty bumps, 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 bumps. And he also has, like, this huge, like, this star-looking thing on his body. And this one as well. And he has, his mouth is open showing us his teeth um his teeth um there so we have the gum and then we have his teeth there his teeth there and we have something else that's in his mouth we're not yet certain what it is in his mouth then um of course he has a nose and then he has spots all over his body okay he has like spots all over his body as well Right, so this picture is going to summarize to us what entails the second stage in of HIV in children and, and infants. So starting with the head, um, when we see these spots, um, they remind me of chickenpox. And we know that chickenpox is caused by herpes zoster. So um, the first thing our first symptom that comes up in this stage is herpes zoster infection. So children who have herpes zoster infection would um, uh, uh, do fall into this category or stage. Um, then we have the nose, and if, if the nose is part of the upper respiratory tract. So the thing that reminds me of um, 
or the thing it reminds me of is the symptom is upper respiratory tract infections. So um, in stage two, the, uh, they, they do have, uh, children do have up, upper respiratory tract infections, but it's not just any type. It has to be a chronic or a recurrent type, okay? Um, then um, coming to the mouth, um, as we see here, there's this... Um, something in his mouth right that's actually an ulcer so oral ulcers are also part of the, um, the manifestations um i forgot to do, make like a little fissure here along the mouth this this fissure basically represents um angular calitis um or angular stomatitis uh, which is basically like these fissures along the sides of the mouth. Um, most of these terms, I'm, I'm not going to really go into detail of it because of the, for purposes of the video or length of the video. Um, so if you don't understand a specific term, just um, stop the video, um, Google it, and you'll understand why I put it as such in the picture. Right. Um, then uh, here on his gums, Right there, um, he'll have basically this linear, linear gingival erythema. Right. Okay, so we're done with the head, and now we're moving on to the body. Now, the f uh, the the thing that is probably most prominent here are these um these 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 protrusions, right? These ones pr um represent papula. Um, which are basically like um, an a dermat is a dermatological description of um, a bump, or yeah, let me say a bump. Okay, um, I'm not sure if it's a bump or a spot, but it just um, confirm that um, I think it's a bump. Um, then basically, what happens is that uh, this what this represents is um extensive no not extensive it's just papular pruritic pruritic eruptions so this baby basically or this child basically has a very itchy skin and then they have this papular rash that comes about with this itching this must be very uncomfortable for the child as well um then uh, here we also have um, a star, and this star reminds me of warts. Warts are not a very pleasant thing to see or to have as well, but they do happen in these children who are HIV positive. And if you find them, um, then they uh, are staged. At, uh, they are part of stage two. So these warts are just—it's not just a single wart; it's extensive. Um, they have they have extensive warts so what they basically have is extensive um viral wart wart sorry wart virus infection right and then here some of you might have already guessed that this is the liver not the perfect of drawings but hooray for you guys who guessed it um <laughs> probably no one but anyway um so this basically represents hepatosplenomegaly right and then coming down to the feet his feet seems to be smelling and this comes from the nail so that represents fungal nail infections and this snail right here snail reminds me of the word mollusk for creepy things and that immediately reminds me of a disease called molluscum contagiosum right and molluscum contagiosum will also be extensive and that will be your summary of stage one or oh, sorry stage two the mild stage of hiv in infants and children 
Right, so moving on to stage three, I've already drawn this um, picture for you. Um, uh, stage three is the um, advanced stage, and we'll now get into the description of stage three in children and um, infants. Um, so as you can see, this cartoon basically has very fiery hair. Um, so that fiery hair does um, represent fever. So this fever will be unexplained, Oh, will be unexplained and it will be persistent. Um, now, it can be persistent in two ways. Either it can be intermittent or it can be constant. But it has to last constant, but it has to last at least for more than a month. Let me, yeah, more than one month. That represents one month. Um, so when we talk about fever, obviously we have to um, describe or um, note what the temperature is, and this will basically be a temperature of thirty um, of more than thirty seven point five. Okay, next we will be going on to um, the lips or the mouth area. Here we just will. Um, um, put emphasis on the tongue as he's sticking it out and you can see that this this I was trying to draw like this hairy situation that was there and that is supposed to represent oral leukoplakia so this oral leukoplakia is basically like this um it's it's this um lesion on the tongue that um that looks white and doesn't come off when you scrape it. You guys can go look, um, Google it and just find out how it looks like and take a look at the picture. Um, then you can see a lollipop there and we all know that this is a, a lollipop is a candy and that reminds me of candidiasis. And since we are speaking, or we just came from talking, um, about the mouth area, this will be oral candidiasis. It's very important that we um, do not um, conf uh, just call it any type of candidiasis because the other types of candidiasis will be part of another stage. So oral candidiasis is part of stage three, which is the advanced stage in children and um, um, infants. Then as you can see this picture, this boy is very um, has lost a lot of weight, um, but he still has some muscle to him because if he didn't, I would probably have drawn it as a stick man, just a plain stick man, but he has um, this um, double lining that indicates his, his um, some weight on his arms and legs. Um, so having said that, this patient, however, or this boy does have moderate moderate uh, malnutrition or wasting or wasting and we all know that um, we can um, pick this up quite easily on uh, when we uh, plot our graphs um, on our on our uh, pediatric graphs and um, this um, malnutrition is unexplained and it does not respond to treatment. Okay, so it's not just any um, malnutrition. It has to be a moderate one or, or wasting and it's unexplained and it doesn't respond to treatment. Right, then as you can see um, in the lungs, I put in, uh, uh, two letters there, TB. And that's obvious because then we, we will think about TB. But this TB will be pulmonary TB or lymph node. Uh, lymph node TB. Um, don't extra pulmonary TB does not belong to this stage. It belongs to another stage. So just be um, vigilant about this and um, take note that it is only pulmonary and lymph node TB that falls part of the advanced stage. Um, since we're still talking on, on uh, about the lungs, we'll have two more arrows that come from the lungs. Um, 
And the first, the, the middle arrow will basically represent our bacterial pneumonia. So these children have bacterial pneumonia, um, but this bacterial pneumonia is not just any bacterial pneumonia. It has to be severe and recurrent. <clears throat> so we have severe recurrent bacterial pneumonia. And then we also have pneumonitis. Oops. Uh, we have pneumonitis, and uh, this pneumonitis is basically a symptomatic one, and it is symptom it's symptomatic, and it is a lymphoid interstitial pneumonitis. Right. Uh, then we also have actually there were three arrows that came from the lungs and that the last one will be other lung related HIV um, lung lung HIV lung related HIV related lung diseases so other HIV related lung diseases such as bronchiectasis, for example. Right, then um, there's some poop there, guys. There is some poop. Yes, it is poop. So this poop is representing diarrhea, okay? So this child has unexplained, it has to be unexplained, and it has to be persistent. So they have unexplained persistent diarrhea that basically, um, and when we say persistent, it has to be at least uh, 14 days or more. Okay? Um, this is definitely, this must be very irritating for the poor child. But yeah, that does happen and it belongs to the advanced stage. Um, now, under TB, since I was writing letters, I also wrote their red blood cells. So um, we will talk now about the blood system. And basically what happens there is that you have um, erythrocytopenia. So you have um, basically your, your red blood cells will drop. So you'll have anemia. Anemia. You'll also have neutropenia and thrombocytopenia. Cytopenia. Okay, so anemia is, it's only when it's less than eight grams per deciliters. Um, neutropenia is when it's less than 0 0.5 um, cells, basically, uh, times 10 to the power L, uh, times 10 to the power nine per liter, and then um, the thrombocytopenia, we will also just have less than 50 cells. So um, that would be your the summary of the stage three or advanced stage. Stage three, advanced. All right, guys, thanks for watching this video. Um, because I don't want to make the videos too sh too long, I will then um, uh, proceed to stage four in another video. And check that out so that you have the complete version of the stages in children and infants. See ya.